morning one and all myself akash anand and today i'll be giving a lecture on highway planning that is the first unit of highway engineering so the first module i am going to cover today is highway planning and its objectives and various classification of roads so these are the contents uh, for the module 1 highway planning and classification of roads so first we have the socio economic growth and cultural growth and the industrial development of any country so highway planning plays a very major role in this so when we look into the socio economic growth and cultural growth of any society or country we have to see the efficiency of the transportation system for let us take an example uh, for example if there is an existing road system uh, which is well maintained or we can say if there is a newly constructed road Uh, what opportunity it provides is that uh, it connects various rural regions to that of the urban regions so it opens the gate for starting uh, small businesses and providing various job opportunities so the earlier remote location is now the business center okay so this helps in the growth in the local um, economy of that particular also the improved transportation uh, enables the exchange of uh, cultural uh, activities as well uh, where various uh, people uh, with different uh, cul cultural uh, heritage uh, meet each other and uh, can share their uh, uh, diverse perspectives then we have the requirement of the transportation at all stages of commodities so here i can, i would like to explain this with uh, with the help of an example so let us consider a farm where we have the raw material now this raw material has to be uh, delivered or it has to be transported from that farm to the processing facility or you can say the mill so from uh, once it is processed again it has to be sent to the distribution centers and then from there it will be sent to the uh, outlets from where it will reach the consumers then we have road transport which serves independently as well as the fee and also as a feeder service so this point i would like to bifurcate into two parts uh, so first we will see regarding the road transport which is serving independently so let me explain this using an example starts a, uh, i want to start a small business no for uh, instead of uh, relying on the other modes of transport i would like to have my own small truck Uh, for the transportation facility so that i can directly or uh, the people working under me can directly deliver the uh, product to the client okay so it will save the delay and it will also save the uh, time travel time okay so uh, it is also beneficial uh, so highway planning also plays a major role in that uh, now going to the next part of this same point that is feeder service now let us uh, let me consider the example of uh, bangalore airport here so whenever we go to the uh, we go to bangalore okay by means of airways so after getting around there we are provided with various buses which serves as a feeder service so what feeder service means here is that we will have uh, various uh, places to visit within the city for example in bangalore city i want to go to whitefield or else i want to go to electronic city so these buses will provide me uh, services for going to that particular destination okay similarly they also have the bus services for going to the other cities nearby cities such as mysore and uh, mangalore uh, in a similar way when we have to come to, uh, we have to go to the airport for boarding a flight for that purpose also same buses are provided uh, acting as the feeder services so the traveler can start from the origin point for example if i have to travel from electronic city to the airport so i can get the bus from there okay kia 9 that is the bus number for example so that bus is available for uh, and so here we can see the highway planning in form of flow chart chart only the last part that uh, we would like to see is the integrated transport and the intermodal transport for the efficient cargo movement so the transport modes uh, the integrated transport modes what it means is like involvement of more than one mode okay that will focus on maximizing the utility of uh, the trip makers for example in terms of comfort level safety level and so on while in uh, intermodal transport uh, what uh, regarding the safe or efficient uh, cargo movement what we would like to add is that it also involves uh, various modes of transport like where the two or more modes of transport modes are involved and in this case the cargo can be shifted among uh, various uh, traveling modes whether it be trucks or uh, train or you can say uh, uh, ships okay next is the objects of highway planning so these are some uh, major points that we can see here that is the planning of overall road network 
okay so the planning of road network basically deals with the efficient and safer traffic flow and also the cost optimization so the main focus is that the initial cost of construction the maintenance cost and in case there is a need of renewal of uh, pavement uh, layers and also the operation cost these should be as minimum as possible also they have to follow a particular road design network in order to uh, reduce any chances of congestion also optimization of signals can be done in order to uh, reduce the chances of accidents then we have the principle of maximum utility to be used so in this case uh, what we have to see is uh, the road uh, that we are considering the entire length of road or the road system that we are considering should be based on the maximum utility that it can provide also uh, we have to see that uh, the road construction should be possible within the uh, available resources uh, for construction and uh, along with that we have to see that the stipulated time period that has been given uh, in the beginning itself it should be possible to construct that road within that time period then we have the phasing of uh, project and so in this case uh, what we have to see is uh, the priority is given so a fixed date is set uh, so based on that priority the road construction has to be done and the deciding factor or the criteria which is considered in this case is the utility so in phasing of the project what is it means is whatever is the critical area that has to be uh, attended first that has to be performed first and then it has to look into the other portion of the uh, project then we have the plan for future requirements so in this case what we have to do is uh, uh, we can say future forecasting so uh, uh, for the present situation whatever data is available based on that the analysis has to be done and we have to predict what would be the future uh, traffic pattern what would be the future population and whether uh, the, there will be flexibility in order to adjust with the uh, what is coming next okay like what is the anticipated flow of traffic after 10 years so whether uh, the flexibility of uh, highway planning will be there with respect to whatever is coming whether it be uh, the technological advancements or various uh, uh, traffic needs uh, any uh, increase is there in the traffic needs so based on that we have to look into the future requirements then we have the working out of suitable financing system so in this case uh, what we have to see is we have to look for any agencies like government agencies that can uh, provide any funding uh, for the development and maintenance of a road network okay that we have to see along with that uh, we can Im uh, look into the impo uh, imposing of uh, any tax like toll tax or any uh, type of any type of user fees that can be collected from the road users uh, in terms of revenue that will also help in the uh, maintenance and uh, construction or repair work of the road okay next we have the classification of roads so first type of classification of roads is based on different seasons of the year so here it can be classified into all weather roads which uh, are quite negotiable during all the weather types and also uh, only the exception that is there at major crossings during when the water level is too high only that time there will be some issues while in case of fair weather if we see uh, the traffic interruptions uh, will be there during the monsoon season then the next classification is based on type of carriageway so roads can be classified into two types paved and unpaved so paved ro roads can be of two types again that is will be coming with a hard pavement course or at least a water bound macadam layer should be there so in water bound macadam layer what happens the crushed stone aggregate will act as the base course uh, after that the water is sprinkled and later on the rolling of the uh, layer is done uh, this uh, is uh, in terms of performance this is uh, better uh, than earthen roads and gravel roads so earthen roads here what happens is in this case the soil is uh, applied in form of layer okay and this is the least expensive uh, i mean it is uh, uh, cheaper compared to the other types of uh, uh, roads that have been constructed uh, these types of roads are actually uh, constructed for uh, low traffic condition or uh, rural uh, regions uh, then we have the gravel type of roads so although these are are not of that good quality however they are preferred more over the earth materials so here a compact mix of earth and gravel is used in this case
Uh, next is based on the pavement surfacing so this is basically what coating has been done on the surface course so we have two types surfaced course and unsurfaced course so uh, un in unsurfaced course there won't be any uh, surfacing that will be performed not uh, not even a single coating will be there while looking into the surface types it can be of various types like uh, the one which comes with bituminous surfacing or cement concrete surfacing then we have the roads uh, based on traffic volume so uh, this can be classified majorly in three types but we can also have one more type that is a uh, very heavy traffic road in this in that case the vehicle per day uh, the, uh, that are moving on that particular road would be uh, more than 600 vehicles per day uh, similarly for heavy traffic roads uh, 251 to 600 vehicles per day uh, medium traffic roads uh, the vehicles per day are 70 to 250 while for light traffic roads uh, the vehicle per day are less than 70 Next we have uh, based on the load transported or tonnage. So this is basically how much load uh, in tons which the road can withstand. So in this case uh, it is defined as uh, tons per day. So we have various classes here as we can see that is uh, class 1 or class A, uh, then class 2 or class B and class 3 or class C. So these are based on how much tons of load it can withstand. The next we have based on location and function. So this is the same as uh, the one which will uh, we will see later as a part of Nagpur road development plan. So these roads are classified into five types that is national highway, state highway, major district road and ordinary district road and village roads. So national highway are the roads are the main branches of roads which runs along the entire length and breadth of India. Uh, these connects various important ports it connects various uh, uh, what we say large uh, industry uh, various uh, tourist centers and also uh, very uh, important uh, capitals of the states along with that it also provides uh, path for the strategic movement of the indian defense and uh, the responsibility of construction and maintenance of national highway is that of uh, central government uh, there are various examples like uh, here we can see Amritsar Ambala Delhi road uh, is known as National Highway 1 while Agra Mumbai road is the National Highway 3. Then moving on to the next type that is the state highway. So these are the arterial roads of the states which connects various uh, district headquarters, important cities uh, within the state and connects them to that of the adjacent national highway. The design specification is uh, as uh, same as that of the uh, national highway. Uh, the construction and maintenance responsibility is that of the state government in this case. Then we have the major district roads. So these are the roads uh, which are uh, the main roads in our uh, districts and it serves the purpose of providing the production center along with the market center and uh, provides a connection between them or else it connects uh, the market center to the uh, main highway. Design specification is lower when compared to that of the state highway and national highway. Uh, while well, the responsibility of construction and maintenance is of the district authority and uh, the grant which is provided in this case is uh, uh, the grant for the construction that is provided in this case is from the state uh, government while in case of state highway that we have seen just before this in that case the grant the responsibility of grant uh, is uh, provided from uh, the central government for the construction purposes then we have the other district road so these uh, serves the rural regions of uh, production centers and the outlets. So the function is same as that of the major district road. So it connects the market center, uh, the outlets to the market centers and the district headquarters, uh, tehsil headquarters, and uh, and other main roads. Uh, and it has lower design specifications when compared to the major district roads. Then the next in this category is the village road. So village roads uh, are the roads which connects the villages or a group of uh, villages uh, to the next higher category of uh, this is only meant for the movement of fast moving vehicles. It has superior facilities and design standards when compared to these roads are meant for carrying very heavy traffic, heavy volume. Uh, these are either owned by the state government or the central government, government whether uh, it depends upon whether the route belongs to the state highway or the national highway next we have the urban roads that are classified into four types arterial roads sub arterial roads collectoral streets and local streets so the arterial uh, roads are the roads uh, are the divided highways with full or partial access controls 
and it connects the central business district to the residential area within the suburbs and it also facil facilitates any traffic flow to or from the sub arterial and collect street system the spacing will vary based on whether it is located at a high, uh, highly developed cbd or to the or uh, sparsely developed borders so accordingly it is 1.5 km for highly developed cbd to 8 km or more for sparsely developed borders then the restrictions on the parking and loading and unloading activities are there along with that pedestrians are only allowed uh, at the intersections then we have the sub arterial roads uh, these are used uh, these roads connect the adjoining areas of arterial streets uh, the volume is uh, the volume of traffic is uh, lesser here in case uh, when compared to the arterial roads spacing varies from 0.5 km for the central business district to the 3, 3 to 5 km for the suburbs then parking and loading uh, unloading uh, are st still uh, restricted in this case and regulated uh, pedestrians are allowed only at the intersection so it is same as that of the arterial roads then we have the collector streets uh, so collector streets are located basically in the uh, residential areas and uh, business areas and industrial areas the main aim is to collect the traffic and distribute it to or from the local streets uh, it provides access to the arterial streets and in this case full access is allowed which was not allowed in case of arterial and sub arterial roads and few parking restrictions are still there except during the peak hours then we have the local streets uh, so access to the residence uh, it provides access to the residence business or abutting property abutting property is uh, the property which we will find uh, next to any road or street uh, then traffic carried either originates or terminates along its length and uh, there is an unrestricted parking and pedestrian movements in this case so uh, in the next lecture uh, we will look into the module 2 where we will discuss about the history of road development in India.